Hello and welcome to PoE for Dummies, Alters, this time Eater of Worlds edition. Eater of Worlds is the counter one to Searing Exarch and he is the blue guy and he is another of Eldritch Horrors that we have. If you remember from last time, we have four Eldritch Horrors, Black Star, Searing Exarch, Infinite Hunger, Eater of Worlds here. There are also others like Maven, Shaper and Elder and so on, but they are mostly related to them. Now... For Eater of Worlds and his parts, we have Infinite Hunger and then the boss himself, Eater of Worlds. You will encounter this while you're doing your map progression. Starting from yellow maps on towards to tier 16 maps, you will encounter at one point the Infinite Hunger around tier 10 and Eater of Worlds when you finish your tier 16 maps. You will get the green invitations for them, which are not fail never get again you will get them again including the small ones and the big ones but you can of course go in practice them and so on now to cover the bosses quickly and concisely infinite hunger i will of course link all this down in the description below infinite hunger is the big tentacly guy well medium tentacly guy who has a few abilities so he has drill charge which is slaughter basically he does a shield charge with his uh, with his scepter in front, he sometimes bugs out and switches direction 180 degrees, so he can, if you are close to him, still attacking him while he does that, he may switch the direction 180 degrees and, uh, and one-shot you, so pay attention to that. Crush is an AoE ability, he can take, uh, he can take his staff and then pop it in the ground and that does, does an AoE. It has a channel time, so you know when that's going to happen. Kull is, I think, another, like, throwaway ability with the with a spear uh, feast is when he basically takes something and then spews it out whatever there's also digestion digestion is when he does the vomit vomit is melt digestion and feast could be some something similar but that one is is to be decided so vomit digestion fires additional projectiles that leave behind a pool that does physical chaos dot and reduces movement speed basically tldr avoid the biggest mechanic obliterate is the slam by the way the biggest mechanic is hunger hunger is when he becomes invulnerable digs down leaves a poison chaos dot trail or physical chaos dot trail behind and remains for a duration and he then jumps out and attacks the player. He can remain there for a long time or he can remain there for two seconds. I haven't figured out the way how to how to how to do that. So if you stand on him, sometimes he will emerge, sometimes he won't. It's it's basically an RNG at that point, but usually it lasts for 10-15 seconds. Now, when he does that, usually what happens is the floor, the the spewage, the whatever C comes up. And it will come up to cover the whole arena. What you need to do, you need to go inside of it. You need to drown yourself. When you do that, you will be spawned on a mini island. You will have an invulnerable duration. So use it. Don't move. Look around. Because where the water moves, the exit is that way. So if the water moves like southeast, bottom right, you will go that direction and you will encounter a portal. Caveat. If you move in the water, you will get slowed, you will have tendrils on you, you'll have mobs attack you as well. Find safe spots, which are basically mini islands, where you can like remove those slowing debuffs and just get out of there, out of there, through the portal. This is all in repeat. The more you fight him, the more you will repeat the, the same phases. Nothing else changes, basically. So that's basically it. You also get a debuff, reducing 1% physical damage, that or increasing the physical damage you take by 1% and to evade, as well as long as you stay in the, in the, the drown, drowning part. Now, the big one, Eater of Worlds, has a very simple mechanic. He's way easier than Searing Exarch, so don't be, don't be afraid. He is the big monster that you can basically see, that you can basically see here. I have, I think, some kill videos of him, but what he does in a regular variant, I'm not covering Uber variants. In regular variant, he has a few abilities, which is basic attack. Tentacles are spawned under the player, three of them, in like a triangle, and they will do tap, tap, tap. 
spear slam, which is hunger. He glides to the player. He'll go hunger, stand there, one, two, three, boom, AoE. That's what he does. When he does that, run away. Simple. Tentacle slam, riding mask. He summons big two to five to six tentacles. Big tentacles that will slam on player location. When they spawn, they will slam there. So just go the other way. Flame dash or dash the other way. Lightning beam perish. He channels, follows you around wherever you move, however fast you move. And then he, he has a limit of how fast he can move, but he still follows you. And then he just does perish and then a, light, a beam. Lightning beam or shocking beam, yes. Shocking beam, very, very easily sidestepped. And then there's the doom phase, which is inescapable doom. He moves in the middle. He goes up. He gets invulnerable. He starts to channel a beam with an increasing circle. You will see purple orbs in the arena. You have to stand in the purple orb, channel a bit, which is automatic, stand in the purple for like two seconds or less, and then move to the next one, move to the next one, move to the next one. You want to explode those purple orbs so they look like purplish and when you move on them they will just increase in size gets a bit of white and you will know that they are they are done once you do all of them maven breaks breaks him out of his uh, invulnerability and then you repeat it over and over again very very simple now there are some balls in the edge of the arena those balls can inf inflict um, chaos poison or chaos physical dot and they will like drown the player those are to be avoided they don't run around ev anywhere in the in the like room they just stay there sort of so pay attention when you're jumping towards uh, the in the doom phase when you're jumping towards those those purple purple things that's basically it for him way 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 simpler than um, searing exerc now for passive points before we go into before we go into the the crafting and before passives one second there are altars i forgot to mention those same as searing exerc there's boss altars mob altars player altars player altars are generally the buff altars mob altars are buffer for monsters and the buffer for for map boss is basically map map altars so here i have the mob and player player one so player additional physical damage reduction and additional and 100 chance to create shock ground on death lasting three seconds and chance to drop additional expedition scarab once you do that they have a delay when they're spawn when they spawn they will spawn and they will do their thing same goes with every altar that um, eater of worlds has you can also click it on the device that's how it looks now when it comes to what it rewards, sometimes you can get a Divine Orb Altar. Don't get baited. It's 1 in 700 or 1 in 1400. It's it's extremely rare. It's it's crazy rare. But that means basically Elder, elder Mobs, Eldritch Mobs drop a Divine Orb and you can get with like 15 Divines in a map. Searing Exerc is still better. With Chaos Orbs it's better to have something that's consistent than something that's extremely inconsistent. But it can give good rewards as well. Now, when it comes to the passive skill tree... Passive skill tree, he's on the con con counter side, pardon, counter side of Searing Exerc, he is on the right side. He has bottom part and the upper part, which are similar. Now, the mini nodes give you monsters influenced, have chance to drop an item with an L um, Ether of Worlds implicit modifier. When we go to the left, your maps have 10% chance to award double progress, same as Searing Exerc. And 20% increased chance to find Eater of Worlds altars in your maps. Now, this is different than Searing Exerc. Searing Exerc has 50% chance to spawn an altar the first time you go in. But Eater of Worlds has chance to find Eater of Worlds altars. Using math, <laughs> Eater of Worlds has way more altars per map in general than Searing Exerc. No matter the usage. But the rewards are significantly worse if we talk about everything in common. So the, the other one gives uh, Awakened Sextants, this one gives sometimes Scarab, sometimes Chisels, and so on. It's just, just, it's not that worth doing. It's good if you want safer mobs, and not to sacrifice a Pantheon, because there's nothing that can save you from this, besides, like, using Arakali, and, like, um, 
Shakari for reduced poison and chaos damage, but if you have more than 30% chaos resistance, Ether of Worlds is irrelevant. So those are the two main nodes there. The bottom ones here, they give you pack size, of course. Eldritch Iker found in your maps influenced have 10% chance to be duplicated, and monster packs have 2% chance to contain an additional touching tentacle mass. Tentacles are basically slammy slammy, they, they attack you. So this basically duplicates the currents you can get. So instead of one Eldritch Ikers, you can get two. That's basically it. The big one, big node, is the similar version of the Searing Exerc one, which is Eldritch Gaze. Eldritch Altars influenced by Eater have an additional downside and 50% increased effect of upsides. Basically, if you want to get more currency and so on. That's all there is to it. Now, when it comes to crafting, if you have, as an example, an item with an implicit modifier and you add a craft of whatever lesser Eldritch Iker, this will overrule the craft, the not the craft, pardon, the implicit modifier the item had before. This also works on um, items that have like synthesis modifiers. You can add additional crafts on them for implicits, but it's the same rule as a Searing Exerc. You can apply an implicit modifier to gloves, head, boots, and those modifiers have a range. Now, I also have for you... Uh, one little thing which I will just briefly mention, which is I found the, the wiki page with all the alters, modifiers, implicits, and like prefixes, suffixes, and whatnot. That's for, for your own uh, leisure to, to read and to probably understand. And when it comes to modifiers that come from uh, Eldritch Ikers, I will also provide that as a link. Now, one more currency just to cover it once again is... Eldritch Currency, Eldritch Chaos Orb, Annulment, Exalted Orb. There's also Orb of Conflict. What do they do? Eldritch Chaos Orb. If Eater of Worlds is dominant, reroll suffix modifiers. What does dominant mean? Dominant means you take one greater Eldritch Iker, one lesser Eldritch Ember, so Iker versus Ember, and if it's greater, that's rank 2, let's say, lesser is rank 1, rank 2 outweighs rank 1. So that's dominant. When a modifier is greater than the previous one. I think my boots have... Yes. My boots have Searing Exarch Exceptional and Eater of Worlds Lesser. So Searing Exarch on my item is dominant. That's how it works. Now, if uh, Eater of Worlds is dominant, reroll suffix modifiers. Suffix modifiers are bottom three. For Annulment, if Eater of Worlds is dominant, remove a suffix modifier. Remove one of the three, of the three bottom ones. And the, if the Eater of Wolves is dominant, add a suffix modifier, which is Eldritch Exalted Orb, which means it adds a suffix. Pretty clear once you understand who is dominant, who is submissive when it comes to the hierarchy. The higher tier modifier is dominant. That's always the rule. And there's the Orb of Conflict. Unpredictably raise the strength of one and lower the other one. That's how you get this one to be exceptional. The other one got lesser, but the first one got exceptional. There is also perfect. Perfect is when an item has the maximum amount of uh, what it can. This one has Searing Exerc Implicit Modifier. Perfect. So there is that. That should cover all that you need to know when it comes to when it comes to beginner level of Searing Exarch and Eater of Worlds, of Eldritch Altars, and so on. My recommendation is to do them in tier 14 to, through 16. If you can do 16s, perfect. If not, do 14s, 15s, all is well. Once you encounter half of it, the same is with Searing Exarch. 14 of 28, you will drop a, a Riding Invitation. I think it's called the writing writing invitation yes and once you do 28 you will get in fragments you will get a screaming invitation which is your eater of worlds encounter i don't recommend doing them i recommend selling them because people do uber versions of the bosses like the stronger versions which this one also has let me cover that briefly insatiable appetite absence of symmetry and harmony is 85 his full power is unleashed and 25% chance to drop an additional exceptional Iker. So there is that. That should cover now everything. This is a bit shorter because it's a smaller mechanic and it should come naturally as you play the game. The game will introduce you as is. But that covers altars 
Searing of Exarch and Eater of Worlds for PoE for Dummies. Now, if you've liked the video, please do give it a like. Thank you so much for watching. If you don't mind, please do sub it. I'm greatly appreciative of, of every subs. If you have anything to add, feel free to comment down below. I stream almost daily on Twitch, YouTube, and Kick. Otherwise, thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.